I'm just dying to know your thoughts on um, the national crisis, international crisis we're in the middle of here. Of course, you also ran for governor of California. What's your take on just how long and deep this recession is going to be, what that means for business, what that means for consumers? Well, thank you for having me, uh, Emily. Nice to, nice to hear your voice. Um, listen, I think we are in unprecedented times. No one has seen anything like this. Um, in my view, very different than 2008, than 9-11. And I think no one really knows how long, um, you know, quarantine or, or shelter in place will be. And no one really understands the full depth of the economic um, setback. But it's very real. There's a lot of people really struggling out there. Um, you know, you saw unemployment, unemployment claims were, you know, sky high this week and the week before. So, I think we just need to think about, you know, each other and, and helping everybody and helping each other and, um, you know, but doing the right thing to contain this virus, which is, you know, a, a true pandemic. What do you think this means for the tech industry and the media and entertainment industry, which, which now uh, you know uh, even better? You've got a company like Netflix, uh, the market cap of Netflix rivaling Disney, which had to close all of its theme parks in the middle of this. Yeah. Well, media, as you know, is a highly diversified category. When you say media, there's many different parts of media. And um, clearly the traditional movie business is on hold for right now. I live in L.A. now. Virtually all the movie sets are uh, down and all production has ceased. Some post-production is still happening at, uh, at people's homes. Um, the theme park, Broadway, all of that is, is shut down. Um, but the streaming services, you're right, Netflix, Disney+, Plus, others are, um, you know, have a lot of customers and a lot of uh, people watching right now because people are, are at home with, um, you know, with a, with a lesser array of entertainment options. You know, all sporting events are, are, you know, not happening right now. So there's parts of it, I think, of the entertainment business that, that uh, if you will, benefit to some degree and some that are, you know, unduly hurt. So it's a mix. It's a, it's a very, it's a significant mix. So what is the mix then, or where does Quibi fall in that mix? You're launching Monday. You've been working on this now for a couple of years. People are glued to their devices. We're devouring, it seems, more content than ever now that we're locked inside. But at the same time, you can't advertise in a big way uh, during March Madness, for example. Um, you know, what does this yeah. mean for Quibi's launch? Yeah. Well, the first question we had to ask ourselves was, um, could we launch? You know, were we prepared to launch in a completely virtual environment? I mean, all um, our entire employee base, like probably everyone else, is working from home. So um, the, first, the good news is, from a tech perspective, we absolutely can. We are a cloud-based service. Google Cloud is our major partner with some workloads on AWS. And we are we can launch virtually. You know, back in the day, you had to have a network operations center and a data center. We don't have that, and so we can launch. The second question is, do we have enough content? The good news is we had accelerated um, development of content um, because we, we wanted to have a lot banked because we didn't know exactly what we would need over what course of events. So we have enough content to last us through most of the fall of next year, probably till Thanksgiving. And um, so we then said, okay, we can launch. Now, should we launch? And, you know, here's how we thought about it, Emily. We're not healthcare professionals. We're not first responders. Um, but we thought, you know, what we do is inform, entertain, and inspire. And we thought that we could uh, bring a little joy and light and levity to people's, you know, challenges right now. So we decided to go. We've had to pivot a number of things. You mentioned March Madness. We were going to one of our big sections of our television buy was March Madness. Um, the NCAA final game is was supposed to be Monday, the day of our launch. We were big buyers of the NBA finals, which is now gone. So we had to pivot our... Um, media spend to more digital, um, some other linear TV, OTT. Um, we had a big launch event that was supposed to be physical that now has to be virtual. Um, we originally had a two-week free trial. We've moved to a 90-day free trial if you sign up by the end of May. So in the last two weeks, we've had to do a lot of, of um, thinking and, and being flexible and agile, and I'm super proud of our workforce because they have rallied and now you've so got have two all of our partners. Meg, you've got two tiers of subscription. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a paid subscription service. One of those is ad-free, but one of those um, 
carries advertising. And I'm curious what you think, whether consumers will sign on to this when they're right now financially stressed. We've got 10 million people who've lost their jobs in the last couple of weeks, and also predictions that the ad industry is going to plummet as well, that Facebook and Google will lose upwards of $40 billion in ad revenue this year. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's one of the reasons that we um, made the service free for 90 days. Um, give people a chance to um, you know, experience Quibi and enjoy Quibi for at least the next 90 days for free. And, um, you know, we'll see where we are. It depends on, um, you know, the depth of recession. I think there will, you know, always be demand for, um, for entertainment. Um, but we recognize that it's an entirely different change, you know, different situation. But we still felt it was the right thing to do to launch. You know, we are an ad-supported platform. Um, our advertisers, we have 10 of the best uh, advertisers in the United States who signed on to be launch partners. They are all ready to launch, all have advertising ready to go on, on Monday. And uh, so, and that's um, all locked in for year one. We'll see about year two. We won't really start selling year two advertising till the fall. And who knows what, will, what the world will be like in the fall. And I think we have to cross that bridge when we come to it. Remember, we're relatively small. Um, you know, our advertising revenue in year one, which we sold out entirely, was $150 million. So, you know, I'm certain we'll be, you know, affected by the broader trends, but we feel really good about our advertisers and, and our year one um, sell-in, and, and they're really helping us to build the platform as well. So I think we're good for year one, and we'll, we'll have to see what happens in year two. Last quick question. You don't own any of the shows that you have, as I understand it. There, there are some contracts whereby uh, they could go elsewhere, let's say, in a couple of years. Why pick that model when it seems everyone else is going the other way and wants to own their yeah. own content? Yeah. Well, we wanted to put forth a deal that was really good for the creators. And so the financial deals, we pay the cost of production plus 20%. They, we license it to our platform for seven years, and at the end of seven years, the, con the creators own their own IP. And for our movies and chapters, you know, those longer-form movies that are told in 10-minute chapters, after two years, they can reassemble that movie into an uninterrupted long-form movie and sell it into another window. And it was very deliberate. You know, we think there's two profit pools in the business. One is the creator profit pool, and one is the platform profit pool. And we said, you know what? We're a new company. We think it'd be fantastic for um, you know the creators to own their own IP because then they would bring bring their best projects to Quibi. So that's why we set out that way. And it's not unprecedented. You go back many years in Hollywood. You remember when the networks didn't own their own IP? They were prevented from doing so by uh, by regulation. And uh, it's only been in the last couple of decades where um, you know the the studios and networks own their own IP. So we're going back to what worked really well. A number of years ago. And I have to say, um, we could not be more pleased with how Hollywood has responded to Quibi, the caliber of stars, writers, okay. producers, directors, talent who has, uh, who has signed on to do projects with us. 